this world is safe. It isn't true. It is. One day, Alcyone had heard that Ceyx had ordered his ship to be made ready for a sea voyage, to visit a far-off oracle. How can you leave me alone? I'll hide in your absence. Over land, it's a long and arduous trip, but I'd still prefer that to a voyage by sea, <coughs> which I fear for my father's winds are wild and savage. You think as his son-in-law you may get some special treatment. Not so. Once they've escaped my father's cave, those winds are wild and beyond anyone's control. As a girl, I've watched them come home, exhausted and spent, and learned to fear them then. Now I am petrified. Surely, she said, if you die, my life is over, and I shall be cursed with every reluctant breath I draw. My love, I hate to choose between my journey and you. But how can I live this way? Stranded, on shore, afraid, domesticated, diminished, a kind of lapdog. Take me with you at least, and we'll meet the storms together, which I fear much less than to be left a widow. In two months' time, no, I'll be back. No, I fear you won't. In two months' I time. I know you won't. For that short time, you could be brave and endure the trial of waiting. She was hardly consoled. She saw she could not hold out any longer in the face of his resolve. She allowed herself to be soothed and consented to his going. There were no more details left to be checked, no last-minute changes to make, and the men, arranged on their benches, were ready to row and go. He boarded and gave the sign, and then he turned to wave at her. She waved at him, while the ribbon of black water widened between the ship and the shore. She gazed at him until he was no longer distinguishable, but still she could see the ship. And she narrowed her eyes to the horizon and watched it as it receded to a smaller and smaller object. And then the whole hull was gone, and only the sails remained, and then they too disappeared. She gazed still at the empty and desolate blue, and then went to her empty bedroom to lie on the huge and vacant bed and give herself over to weeping. The vessel cleared the harbor and caught the freshening wind, which set the rigging to singing and slapping against the spars. I ordered the rowers to ship their roars, and the sailors to make the yards and set sail. Our ship ran before the wind. We made satisfactory progress all that day and had reached a point of no return, with as much blue water astern as remained ahead. But as the sun was sinking in the west, the water everywhere blew until now began to be flecked with the white capped waves sailors dislike. The weather was worse with every moment, for the winds were on the loose. Reef the sails! Poseidon and his henchmen had arrived. Ha! Fail the water! The rest was one an enormous green catastrophe. Secure the spar! He thinks in an obvious Way, that the waves are lions crazed with hunters' wounds, or that the ship is a besieged town attacked by a horde of madmen. One would think that the heavens were crazed with lust to join the turbulent sea. We return to our passion and try to rise up and embrace the air. The men have lost their belief in their passion, their courage, their daughter's skill.
Where are you? Come back! But she found nothing! 
water. He was here. Where is he? Where is he? When morning came, she narrowed her eyes to the horizon and remembered how she had looked on that other day. She remembered his last kiss, the way he turned to the ship, could not bear it, and turned again to her. What is that out there? Oh, it's a man. Alas, poor sailor, for your wife, and... The gods are not altogether unkind. Some prayers are answered. Six, is this how you return to me? She began to run to him, but as she ran crying, a strange thing happened. By the time she had reached him, she was a bird. She tried to kiss him with her bill, and by some trick of the ocean's heaving, it seemed that he reached up to her in response. You ask, how could he have felt her kiss? But better ask, <coughs> how could the gods not have felt it, seen this and not had compassion? For the dead body was changing, restored to life and renewed as another seabird. Together they still fly, just over the water's surface, and mate and rear their young. And for seven days each winter, I'll see any broods on her nest that floats on the gentle waters. For Aeolus, her father, then keeps the wind short reigned, and every year gives seven days of calm upon the ocean, the days we call the Halcyon days. When you see a miracle like that, how can you deny the existence of the gods? Go away! Scram! Scram! <laughs> well, believe it or not, there are some that do. 